Hello everyone, welcome to Nelson series at Raw Online. I am Dr. Abhinaya, I am a consultant pediatrician. So we are going to discuss Pasico Uretric Reflex under the module Urology. Okay, so let's get started. So simply what is Pasico Uretric Reflex? Okay, not exactly the definition but we all know isn't it the retrograde passage of urine. So the urine from the bladder, it is going to pass into the upper urinary tract whenever the detrusor muscles of the bladder is contracting. So this is VUR in simple terms. What is a primary VUR and what is a secondary VUR? Primary VUR is something which is a risk factor. Why we are concerned of VUR? Why there should not be a backflow of urine? Whenever there is backflow of urine from the bladder into the kidneys, it will. it is a risk factor for UTI 1. When there are UTI infections repeatedly, what happens? That will cause kidney scarring, isn't it? So, this is a primary and one of the most common risk factors for UTI and renal scarring. So, primary VUR will increase the infection and it will increase the renal scarring. We will talk about what is primary and secondary in a moment. So, normally VUR should not be there. Why VUR is not present physiologically is because of this angle. So, you can look at the ureter here. It comes here and then it enters the bladder in a oblique angle. And it goes here intramurally in this angle and it is snugly present inside the smooth muscle layer. Normally because of this presentation or because of this insertion, normally there is no retrograde flow. What is a one wave mechanism only, one wave flap, not a two wave flap. But sometimes what happens during the development, there can be a retrograde flow which is happening. Okay. So the ureteral attachment normally is oblique. And there is a flap valve mechanism which will prevent the retrograde flow. When there is a VUR, what happens? This tunnel or the submucosal, after the it enters the muscle, there will be a tunnel. This submucosal tunnel, sometimes it is short or it is completely absent, especially in cases of vesico ureteral reflex. So, this causes the retrograde flow. And what is the incidence of VUR? It is actually 1 to 2 percent, so that is quite high and sometimes, sometimes we evaluate a case of UTI only then find it is a VUR. Okay, or when we evaluate a case of antenatal hydronephrosis and we come up with the diagnosis of VUR. Okay, so 1 to 2 percent is the incidence and mostly, mostly it is congenital and 50 to 60 percent of them have a familial incidence. We will see what is the familial, uh, why it is a familial uh, incidence and why there is a risk and what are the genes involved. Um, in a short while. So, we have talked about renal scarring and all. We have heard about this term, isn't it? Reflex nephropathy. So, what exactly is reflex nephropathy? The vesico ureteral reflex which causes renal scarring and an end stage renal disease is called as a reflex nephropathy. So, this VUR will predispose kidney to infection that is pyelonephritis and that will result in renal injury or scarring. This is collectively, this is collectively referred to what is called as a reflex nephropathy or simple term reflex related renal injury both of them are right so this is the classification of vur this classification from grade 1 to grade 5 is based on the picture that we get in the mcu that is micturating cystourethrogram or this is also called as a voiding cystourethrogram both are right okay so vcug or micturating cystourethrogram this looks like a v so the report that we get on an mcu or a vcug with that, we will be able to classify the VUR from grade 1 to grade 5. Grade 1 mildest or grade 5 is going to be the severest, most severe one. Okay. Grade 1 is, there is reflex only into the ureter. The ureter is also normal. It is a non-dilated ureter. Grade 2 is into the ureter completely till the, into the pelvis, into the calluses. But none of them are dilated. Okay into the ureter, into the pelvis, into the calluses, no dilatation. Grade 3, look at grade 3 here. Here you can see, no, some mild dilatation is there in the ureter. Yes, dilatation of the ureter is there. Mild dilatation of the pelvis is there. And calluses is also dilated, but blunting has not taken place. Blunting of the calluses has not taken place. Grade 4, nicely moderate dilated ureter, or you can call it even as a tortuous ureter here. Pelvis is dilated, calluses are dilated, blunting is seen. This is the grade 4. Grade 5, gross dilatation of the ureter, pelvis, calluses. Here you will not be completely, it is blunted also. And uh, even the corticomedullary differentiation you will not be able to identify. So, this is the classification of VUR grading. Okay, why you need to classify the VUR? 
I know VUR will cause renal scarring or it is a risk factor for UTI, but why? Grade 1 and grade 2 is called low grade VUR, grade 3, grade 4, grade 5. They are called as a high grade VUR. High grade VUR generally are less likely to resolve. Number 1, more likely to cause recurrent UTI, more likely to cause reflux uh, related nephropathy. Got the point? So, that is why we need to do an MCU, identify the grading of VUR. One more thing is starting of prophylaxis. If it is high grade VUR, I have to start prophylaxis. So, your MCU will give so much information just by looking at the grade. I will have to intervene. I will have to save the baby. Okay. Prevent UTI, save the patient. Okay. I cannot assume or I cannot uh, miss the patient from here.